what's up everyone? We're here to talk again about how to specifically upper body and the exercise I picked today is seated bicep curls. Now this one's my, I'm gonna, I almost said favorite. This one is another key component of my upper body day. Obviously it gives you that shapely bicep that everyone looks for. It's the one thing you can see in a shirt The insulin gives away your physical prowess is that good set of pipes, guns, buys for days, whatever you wanna call them. That's what people are looking for. A lot of times when they think about fitness and strength, bicep size is that first thing that comes to mind. We're gonna go over a clip right here. I got three or four of them lined up. Some of them are from about a month ago. Some are as recent as last week, but all illustrate the correct way, again, I believe, to do a seated curl. So with this video, you can see that I got one on each side. Obviously, it's alternating. And the main thing I want you to focus on is getting that full twist. Now you could focus on going straight up and straight down. What you lack when you do that is that nice forearm rotation. That's gonna get not only that full peak of that bicep hit, but it's also gonna explode your forearms in the best way possible. So you can see here that I kind of lean into it a little bit to get that full twist. That way you get that full range of motion and it brings that pump along your entire bicep. Now what you're gonna see if you don't do that is people that kind of go like halfway right here. Now that's good that's about as much as a normal person is gonna do if they don't know what they're doing. But what you don't get is that full extension. And you can really see that that pump in a lot of these videos is drawn all the way to that peak. That's what gets you the full overall arc and that peak in your bicep is that full range of motion. These are pretty, pretty self-explanatory. The only times I see people doing these a little bit weird is when they really lean into it. I mean, they get like a full lean and they're not dabbing or anything. They're just doing a really weird curl. And not only does that take a lot of the stability away from the exercise, but it involves like your lower back. And if you're lifting like how I do, this is typically my fifth or fourth exercise in. I've already hit a really heavy bench. I've hit a really huge triceps or some sort of a fashion where I've warmed up three or four exercises. So to lean over and really get a, a really awkward motion or awkward range of motion, it's just not worth hurting your back. I've had, I have two hours left after this exercise. Last thing I wanna do is hurt myself and miss that much more time in the gym. So like I said, it's alternating. Now you don't have to, you can go five and then five on this hand. What you're gonna notice is that without having that break to alternate, even though you're holding that weight, you do get a little bit of a break. So to go five and then five and then five and five is really heavy. That's good for adding a little bit of that muscle confusion and allowing your biceps to just never remain comfortable, constantly getting that different angles, that different weight the different weight being loaded is gonna give you that extra strength. Although I think I get the best pump with the alternating. It just happens to work for me. I have small little T-Rex arms, so that just happens to be the way I do these curls. Now why seated, you ask? I do them standing, I do incline versions, I do uh, barbell versions of curls. These ones I think are the best for people who have zero clue what they're doing or just stepping into the gym for a first time, or maybe you're a veteran that's just, you took a really long time off and you wanna get back into it. These take the standing stability away from it. Cause when people stand, as they often do, you, what you really see is people kind of lean down, bringing their shoulders into it and they curl. What that's gonna do is cheat the system. It's gonna work a lot more of your shoulders coming down and you're lean into it. Like the range of motion from standing, this, so this is almost half. So I really like seated. You get a good square posture. You get a chance to come all the way up, all the way down, and it really limits the air that you could possibly have. And it really gets a solid, even pump. Even if, like I said, you don't know what you're doing, considerations with this. Using the appropriate weight is a huge, huge thing. The really, I don't wanna say addicting thing is to just go with a huge amount of weight, get a huge bicep pump in. I do five sets of five with anywhere between 50 to 65 pounds, depending on where the exercise falls in the routine, what I'm going for. If I'm just going for a super bicep hit or if I want a little bit more of an extra pump, say before I go do a deadlift, um, that's gonna determine the weight I choose. In a lot of these, you're gonna see 65 pounds. That's because it's my fourth exercise in, I'm going for all out bicep destruction right away and it involves that really nice five by five even form. Now what you can see is that twist at the top 
isn't a, isn't a snap. Like I'm not snapping it in. I'm not really awkwardly turning my wrist. So you can tell that my wrist is nice and straight throughout the entire movement. These are pretty simple. It's just one of those things to where I want you to look at the actual form and the breakdown of it. I'm gonna slow a lot of the clips down so you can see the full flexion and extension. That way, if one of your friends is with you or if you're training with a different buddy that's never done any of these seated curls, that way you can correct them when they're just snapping those weights around and they're not getting the full effect of the exercise because that's what it comes down to within anything with fitness, input equals output. If you lift crappy, the results are gonna be crappy and you're just wasting your time and that's never good because the one thing that people say they never have time for is fitness. So give it the correct time, lift correctly, lift the right way and get the most out of it. These are universal for pretty much any goal. Obviously we're bulking, I've said it over and over and over, you guys know, so I do five sets of five. But let's say you're, you've done your bulk and you're winding into that cutting phase, say you have a competition down the road, these can easily be modeled on any, any platform and goal. For instance, if, like I said, you're cutting and you wanna start working on getting that even definition and that condition into that bicep, you could do three sets of 12, three sets of 15, whatever rep range works for you, these are infinitely moldable. Say you wanna be a power lifter for seated curls and you wanna roll some 85s, awesome, go for it. I mean, I've never seen a power lifting competition with seated curls, but you know, it hasn't existed because no one's tried it yet. You can definitely do that. It's super moldable, it's accessible at any level, and it really trains you to focus on that form because you'll be able to instantly see, because hopefully you're looking at yourself in the mirror for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons, taking selfies, that you can see yourself and you'll be able to watch, okay, that good, that was a full flexion, good extension, good flex, you're going all the way up, you're twisting your wrist, you have a square back, you're seated back, and your legs are in a stable position, that's another aspect. You want a good stable base to where that motion is just coming from your biceps. You don't wanna be having your foot on the ground and the picking up with your calves a little bit to get that. It's good for maybe like the last cheat rep. If you really need to, you'll see me kind of lean into it, but I really try to focus on that square back, even base, and all that X and all of that focus and the energy is in just that bicep curl. Hopefully, you guys like the video. If you do, smash the like button for the series, that how-to series we got going on right now. A lot of you guys are supporting it and want more and more and more. Best believe there will be more. If you wanna see a specific one, one I don't do, or maybe I haven't done in a video before, and you want me to demonstrate it, or maybe take a look at it and see what can be done to make it better, definitely hit me up in the comments, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, I'll be happy to help. So just to wrap up, again, this is the how-to series, upper body, seated leg curls. Hopefully you guys give it a try. If you do, as always, shout it out on either Instagram or Twitter. But most importantly, take it easy.